Hello. How are you guys doing? Oh my gosh, it is 2.41 and I woke up, I don't know, about, about two o'clock, I think. And um, I fell asleep early tonight. Alex went out to dinner with his best friend and then like another one of their friends that they were, like the three of them were good friends in high school. I got late to my videos today and stuff. So he had called me and he was like, um, hey, we're gonna go out to dinner, do you wanna come with us? And and I said, uh, no, like you guys just go. <clears throat> I'm trying to get caught up on stuff. And I was kind of reading and posting videos today and um, it was like almost like I think 7.30, 8 by the time I got all of my stuff done. Well, that can't be because I got on, I did a live stream. But anyway, I don't know what time it was, but so I thought Alex would probably be out later and we would just watch, because we were going to watch American Horror Story tonight. And I thought we would watch just American Horror Story sometime this weekend, but he called me and he was like, hey, I'm on my way home and it was pretty early. And I was like, okay, so he, uh, I think it was like, like nine-ish, I don't know, nine nine something and he's like I'm on my way home and I was like okay 9 30 maybe I don't know anyway so he came home and we watched American Horror Story and I had been texting with Tanya and I was gonna go pick her up to get a fountain pop afterwards and I was like I cannot I'm, t I'm so tired like after it was over I just completely was like ready to crash and she was like yeah I totally understand so I went upstairs with Alex and we talked for a little bit in bed and then I fell asleep I had the craziest dreams. I had all of these dreams about stuff to do with like when I was growing up as a kid, like people. Not really so much about me as like when I was growing up as a kid, but like people that were there when I was growing up. And one of the like the main people I was having dreams about, I always worry, like when I have, do you guys ever worry when you have dreams about somebody like, you, like it means something, you know? I was like, I hope she's okay. So I was having this dream about one of my mom's best friends from like her sorority sister from college that um, then was like her friend, one of her friends for life, not Susie, but Susie was friends with her as well. This one, I had like grown up with her and like her daughters and we were all friends and, uh, or I, my mom was friends with her and like the kids were friends. And so anyway, it kind of got me worried a little bit and, um, so I got on Facebook, like when I woke up, I must've woken up like, I don't know, like two-ish. And uh, I like went to her Facebook. I hadn't, I never get on Facebook because all it is anymore is just like people constantly posting pictures of, um, what do you call it? Um, you know, just stupid, like, little memes and videos and all that kind of stuff. Like, it's just, it's kind of gotten real depersonalized. Although my friend that was in Arizona, she's got back, we're having lunch on Monday. She was posting a bunch of pictures. So, I saw those were, those were fun to see. Um, of she and her son in Sedona. But anyway, um, so I went to her Facebook and I was like, I mean, I did I don't know the last time I've talked to her. But she was doing all this really cool stuff. But did you ever just, like... You'll go to somebody's Facebook and then all of a sudden you're like, it's like 20 to 30 minutes later and you've like, you're like two years into their life. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, I miss her. Like, I, like she was like a big part of my growing up, you know? I know Susie talks to her because whenever I talk to Susie, Susie's always like, oh, I, I spoke to so-and-so and, um, anyway. It was a good day today. It was a really good day. Uh, I talked about this on my Peterisms channel, but people have asked me, did I post my Peterisms video today? I think I posted. I filmed all my videos today. I filmed, posted my vlog. I filmed the Shane Dawson reaction video. I filmed my review to uh, the El Royale movie. Um, I filmed my Peterisms video and I filmed my Spookathon vlog. So I felt very accomplished today. Um, took a shower, did my hair, got my coffee, read a lot today. Somebody asked me, and I said this on my Peterson's video, this is what I was gonna say, um, like about daily affirmations, like what are daily affirmations that I say? 
and they're very simple. I mean, like there's affirmations I say about myself, but the ones that help me the most, I think, are the ones that are like, today's gonna be a great day. I'm gonna be happy all day today. I'm gonna be positive all day today. Um, good things are gonna happen today. Like, and I think those are good affirmations because what they do is they kind of make me poised to notice the good things that are happening, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm going through McDonald's to get a Diet Coke, except that I'm not gonna get a Diet Coke, I'm gonna get a Dr. Pepper because that Dr. Pepper last night was fantastic. And my throat is kind of hurting a little bit right now, I don't know why. And I don't know why that would make a difference, but I feel like maybe the Dr. Pepper would. <laughs> that was the stupidest comment. Okay. Um, it's 43 degrees outside, it feels much colder. By the way, I got a card today from Mitchell, and I just want to say, like, this was one of the nicest cards I've ever gotten. It was so sweet. You guys are just so awesome. Sent me pictures and everything. I love when you guys send me pictures and you write me letters and you tell me about your life and stuff. Like, I don't know. It just feels like such a like such a privilege that you guys are so willing to like allow me in. You know, tell me that stuff and you send me pictures of like you and your husbands and um, your dogs and stuff. I love it. And he sent me actually. You want to see what he sent me a picture of? Okay. Well, I don't want to show his dogs because that's personal. Let me see if I can take this picture off here. He sent me a picture. Can you see it? It's a record album, but it's got Stevie Nicks, Stevie Nicks album on it. Isn't that so cool? By the way, this just made me wanna, he has these little Polaroids in here. Um, this just makes me, I think his boyfriend's name is Josh. Let me say hi to him too. He doesn't, I don't think he put in here what his boyfriend's name was. But anyway, he had reached out to me and asked me to give a shout out for his boyfriend's birthday. Anyway, the card was just very sweet and just lifted my spirits. Do you know what I haven't had? Well, I mean, obviously, because I don't eat meat, but what I haven't had in forever is a Happy Meal. And I have all these friends that love Happy Meals. I have this one girlfriend of mine, she, like, forever, like, she, she always has to have a Happy Meal. I'm kind of like, are they open? Oh, they're not. Okay, can I get a large Dr. Pepper, please? Anything else for you? Nope, that's it. Hey, one away, thank The reason I was thinking that was, because I went through Taco Bell earlier. <laughs> I sat there at the line forever. This is Peter being a complete idiot, and there was a piece of paper on the speaker. It wasn't on the menu. I was looking at the menu, not the speaker. But on the speaker, there was like this piece of paper, and it said, 
we are closed due to um, construction. And they were like working on like the drive-thru. And I just kind of sat there and kept on like watching like the drive-thru and like the menu. And I can't tell you how long I sat there. And then I was like, I have a feeling they're not open. And I looked at the speaker. Excuse me, and it said that. And I was like, oh, that's why. <laughs> that makes total sense because they're <laughs> due to construction. Not to mention there was like these like, you know, six guys in this huge truck that were working on like the drive through window kind of thing. I was like, that makes sense. What was I talking about? Daily affirmations. I think that's what I was talking about. And then happy meals. <laughs> Give me a second to wake up. I promise you it gets better. Although I don't know how long this is going to be tonight because... I've got a bunch of stuff. We have to be out of the house tomorrow by 6.15 6, well, 6 p.m. to go to this fundraiser. And then we are going to, directly from there, to, I hope we can come home and change, directly from there to go see the movie Halloween. And I'm really excited about it. This weekend just got so much more fun. Let me tell you why in a second. Hold on. How are you? Good. I think that's right. Is it right? Okay. Um, so tomorrow we have this fundraiser and then we have Halloween. So those two things will be really fun. And then um, Saturday, I had totally forgotten, but our friend Erin for like the entire time that I've known her, which is now probably like, okay, we met her. We met her before Melissa. Um, but we're like Melissa and Aaron are like best friends but I met Aaron probably six months before Melissa through another friend so I don't know like we met her right before we got married so seven years ago seven and a half years ago something like that so she's had this Halloween party every year forever <clears throat> and um, Aaron's the one who I introduced her and her husband so she and her husband are having the Halloween party on Saturday well I had completely forgotten that the party was on Saturday until like I saw this like Facebook like you know invite things I was like oh my god I completely forgot about that so um that's Saturday night I don't know what time that starts and um then Sunday Alex and I are gonna go see I don't know what some movie I don't know what movie comes out this weekend does anybody know besides Halloween are there other movies that come out this weekend I was listening to my new audiobook, Campfire. It's okay. It's by, uh, here, I'll tell you who it's by here in a second. Sean. It just stopped. It was just coming to his name. Sean Sarles or Sarles. It reminds me of, here, I'll show it to you. You can see it. It reminds me, I'm not very far in it. It reminds me of um, those Lois Duncan books. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? She wrote like, I Know What You Did Last Summer and all these, uh, she wrote a lot of these books uh, like that back in the day. They're very much like, they're kind of a l better than like the stupid paperbacks that you can get anywhere. They're a little bit better than that. What is this? Jake Gyllenhaal and Carrie Mulligan, Wildlife. That looks good. Coming soon. When is October 20, what is October 26? Is that, that's next week, right? The fog, is this an old fog? Oh, that's an old fog. I have, I have that at home. What is this? The Viper Club. That's where um, River Phoenix died. I wonder if that's what it's about. How are you? Hey, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. You're welcome. What is this? This looks so good. Viper Room. The poster for it looks good. I'm going to pull in here. Okay. 
Oh, it has nothing to do with that. An emergency room nurse struggles to free her grown son, a journalist, from capture by a terrorist group. After running into roadblocks with agencies, agencies she has sev discovers a clandestine community of journalists and advocates who might be able to help her. Well, that still sounds really good, doesn't it? Who's the cast? Oh, Susan Strandon, Matt Bomer. Oh, there's some great people in this movie. That does sound good. Okay, what it? Why does it keep on doing that? Let's see what is out already. Um, the hate you give. I really, really want to see that. Oh my god, they. Okay, so Halloween on the t the Rotten Tomato meter, eighty two percent Rotten Tomatoes, eighty one percent audience. The Hate You Give, are you ready for this? Rotten Tomatoes gave it 96%. Oh, an audience gave it 65%, that's interesting. Um, the Old Man and the Gun, which I don't know anything about, 90%, then 72%. Wildlife, oh my God, Rotten Tomatoes gave it 97%. <clears throat> Beautiful Boy got 65%. What is shark water extension? Do you even know? Do you know where you're going to? Do you like the things that... Do you all know what that... That is from one of the most fantastic movies ever. Mahogany. I love that movie with Diana Ross. Oh my lord! Filmmaker Rob Stewart travels across the oceans to expose the legal and violent underworld of shark finning. I don't think I want to see that. So Beautiful Boy is the one based on the book. Um, the Hate You Give was like my number one favorite book of 2016. It was so powerful. I loved that book. Okay, The Old Man and the Gun. At the age of 74, Tucker makes an audacious escape from San Quentin, conducting an unprecedented string of heists that confound authorities and enchant the public. Wrapped up in the pursuit are Detective John Hunt, who becomes captivated with Forrest's commitment to his craft, and a woman who loves him in spite of his chosen profession. It's got Robert Redford in it. He p plays the guy that... Does he play the guy that makes the escape? Yeah. And Casey Affleck plays the detective. Sissy Spacek must play the girl that has, is still in love with him. Danny Glover, Sissy Spacek. Oh, my God. Tom Waits. Oh, I want to see that. That looks so good. Well, Sunday night, we're going to have to either go see The Hate You Give or The Old Man and the Gun. What is this? Hotel Transylvania 3? There are so many movies I want to go see. But now that I'm doing movie reviews, I can do that. I can't believe Halloween got that high of a rating. What did they say they gave it? Like, that's crazy. 82%? Like, that's high for... Um, that's high for Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes usually, like, gives movies really low ratings. Actually, what did... It gave... Uh, Bad Times at the El Royale. It gave it like mid 70s. Um, I think. I don't know. I just kind of pulled it up since I was just there. What time am I at? Oh my god. So, yes, I got up today, <clears throat> did my meditations and <clears throat> all that. Did videos, got coffee, vice versa. Um, took a shower in there somewhere. I got, I just got late today, like, by the time that, like, everything is, like, you know, that I've gotten out of the house, I've gotten my coffee, I've ran my errands, I've come back and done all that. I should do all my video stuff first and then go do that, but the problem is that I'm very, like, linear when, it, when I think about, like, having to run chores, so I'll think, like, okay, coffee, or, you know, like, where, if in, <clears throat> 
in relation to where they the places are. So I'll think like, okay, coffee, bank, you know what I mean? Like Walmart, Costco, and you know. And then by the time I get home, it's like four. And then today I had to watch, this is what put me behind. I had to watch Shane's, you know, an hour and 48 minutes of um, the Jake Paul video before I could um, respond to it. So I took a shower like halfway through and like did my hair and stuff and I was like sitting in bed um, like watching it, just like sitting there in a bathrobe <laughs> watching the Shane Dawson series on my phone. And I finally finished it. Alex came home for a minute uh, to change. And um, yeah, that was about it. That was my exciting day, but it was a good day. It was like really pretty outside, even though it was colder. But it wasn't as cold as it's been the last couple days, but it was still colder. We're supposedly, but we're supposed to get some kind of snow um, in the next. I don't know. I'm sitting here in my head. I'm thinking about Aaron's party on Saturday, and I'm like. What kind of um, costume can I wear? And what can I wear that is not necessarily like a costume, but just for fun? And I'm thinking about, um, what's this thing? I don't have a remote behind it. I'm thinking about just going to get tattoos. I love to use those fake tattoos. Um, partly because I would love to have just like tattoos all over, but don't really want to go through the pain of doing that. It's actually a question that I always get on Q&As and like in my live stream and stuff. People are like, do you have tattoos? And I don't have any tattoos. Uh, there was, so I'm thinking about getting like a big like neck, I'm having like neck tattoos. And a couple years ago I did like a truck driver. Maybe I'll do that again. Um, Alex got his grumpy cat onesie in the mail. He like ordered, apparently he ordered like there's that sewer again. Ugh, stinks. Here, I'll roll up my window this time. Um, apparently he ordered like two run onesies and I can't remember what the other one was, they, uh, the shark one, but they're out of, it's out of order or back, back order or something, but he ordered it anyway. So his grumpy cat one came the other day. He tried it on for me today to show me and um, he was like, what do you think? I was like, I guess I don't really know who grumpy cat is. <laughs> he goes, grumpy cat, you know, grumpy cat. And I was like, no, I don't really know. I guess I don't really know who grumpy cat is. He goes, it's a meme. I go, uh, okay. <laughs> like that's when I feel real old, right? <laughs> <laughs> Should I know who Grumpy Cat is? I don't know, but he was real excited about it. But anyway. He was like, you should get a onesie and wear it. I was like, no, I really shouldn't. I'm not like really into the onesie thing. I was like, I think they're cute on you, but like for me, like I don't. He goes, oh no, I think you would look real cute in it. And I was like, no. I don't think I really need a Grumpy Cat onesie. <laughs> I do kind of look at the onesies though when I see them and I kind of think like, well, first of all, I'm heavy, so like, okay, I'm sure that they're not as comfortable for he like heavier people like me as they are for like when you're in shape, okay? Let's like, just be for real. I just have to believe that. They just don't look comfortable, okay? Like that's just part of it for me is that they just don't look that comfortable to me. They just like look like they would expose all of the parts of my fatness that I don't want to expose, if that makes sense. Like, you know what I mean? Like, do you guys think that way? Like, I look at those onesies and I think to myself, yeah, that wouldn't be a pretty look for me. You know what I mean? Um, so I don't feel like I necessarily need a onesie. Okay, it's gonna stop. Hold on a second. Okay, so yeah, so I don't need a onesie. But anyway, um, but I actually, where was I? I was in Meyer the other day and they had like Christmas onesies, but for Halloween, it didn't make any sense. They had like, um, a reindeer and an elf, I think. I don't know. And like maybe a Santa Claus. They just don't look like, for me, they just, I don't. I love kind of the idea of a costume more than actually wearing a costume, if that makes sense. And um, I still have like friends of mine that like, like so get into it every year. Melissa and Jason, they always like, listen, we're all going to Haunted Fest next week. I know every one of our friends 
will be in some kind of costume gear. So I gotta come up with something for that, right? I can't just act like, I'm, I, because I love Halloween, so I have to participate, right? But like, we still have the friends that like are couples and they buy like the real cheesy costumes. If I'm about to say something that hurts your feelings, I apologize, <laughs> okay? But they're like older than me and they're doing like, you know, doctor and sexy nurse. <laughs> Have you ever noticed how, like, all those couples' costumes or whatever, like, I mean, I shouldn't even say this because all of my girlfriends love those, like, sexy costumes. Like, I was going to say that it, like, the, they always kind of objectify women, but, like, all of my friends love those costumes. So, I guess, I guess it doesn't really, I don't know. That was, like, something that kind of changed over time. Like, if you're of my generation, like, I don't remember, like, in my early 20s. Like, I honest to God, don't. Maybe I'm, I don't know. Maybe I hung out in too many gay bars or something like that. But, like, even with gay men, like, way back in the, t I'm, like, trying to think. Yeah, but even, like, with gay men way back in the day, um, like, when I was in my early 20s, like, gay guys would get in drag for the first time. Or they would do something real funny, you know? Um, or they would spend hours on costumes. But now, it's like, if you go to a gay bar on Halloween, it's like, how skimpy can the costume be? You know, it's like, oh, like you see, you know, 20 firefighters and Speedos, and you know what I mean? Like, all these people that went to Carnival. <laughs> it's just, it's all that, right? And, um, and you can trust that you're not gonna see Peter and that anytime soon. That's just not gonna happen, right? Um, but, like, I don't remember, like, in my 20s, like, my girlfriends, like, going to Lover's Lane and buying, like, a sexy nurse costume. Like, I don't remember that. Like, when did that change occur that Halloween was about how to look as sexy as you possibly could look? Like, like, I feel like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, that's, it's weird to me. Like, I feel like it kind of just changed slowly over time that all of a sudden that's what it was about. I will never forget one year for Halloween we went out and I don't, I'm sure it's like this in other towns, but in Indianapolis, like where my office is and Broader Bowl and also downtown, people do like pub crawls. They do like bar crawls a lot. And so there was somebody that was doing it. It was like a, like, it was like for a fraternity or sorority at Butler. They were doing like some kind of fundraiser on like a, like a Saturday before Halloween. And so they got like, they had all these people that had signed up for this fundraiser. It was literally like a hundred plus people. And they were all dressed like where, where's Waldo? And everywhere downtown that you looked, there were uh, people that looked like where's Waldo. <laughs> it was crazy. And then there's this thing they used to do um, in Indianapolis. I can't remember what it's called. It's called like Night of the Zombies or something. And um, everybody in, in that area dresses up as zombies and goes out as zombies. Okay, I literally walked out of my office one day into like all of these people walking around dressed up like zombies and I had no clue what was going on and I was like what the hell is I mean people like went all out in costumes and I was like what is going on right now and then they were all gonna go hear this band um and we actually got to hear this band a couple years ago it's I think it's we're called, they're called we are the mummies they are so good you guys if you can find them on, put in on YouTube, like, We Are The Mummies Band, and they're, they dress up like mummies. They are fantastic. They are so good. And we saw them a couple years ago. I think they're from Louisville, Kentucky, or somewhere, Lexington, Kentucky, something like that. They're so good, and they're so entertaining. And we got to hear them at this, like, big, like, fundraiser thing we went to a couple years ago. Um, so, yeah. And then I don't know if they do this in Indianapolis anymore, but they used to. Around like the 22nd or 23rd. I oh, know it can't be like that late in the year. Uh, probably like the 15th maybe of December. They do this thing and it's called like Night of 100 Santas or something. And it's like a fundraiser where all these people go from bar to bar to bar. And they're like raising money. And like all the proceeds go to some organization. I don't know. And uh, But it's all these people full on dressed in Santa costumes, okay? I mean, I'm talking head to toe Santa costumes. And so you're like sitting there and you're driving down the street and you literally see like tons and tons of Santa Clauses walking down the street. It's so much fun. 
see, I love people that go all out for that kind of stuff. I always, like, and this is, I think, a lot of my social anxiety inside. I hold back a lot, and I'm like, oh, I don't know. Maybe I should go as Where's Waldo for uh, Halloween. That would be kind of funny, wouldn't it? Party would be a safe th place to go, uh, like as a trial run, <laughs> to uh, do a costume. So I could try a costume there and see. It just got really, really foggy outside. <clears throat> Maybe I'll go to that. Spirit Halloween on Saturday and see what I can find for a costume for Saturday night. But I'm excited about that. And then, um, yeah, so the next week, uh, Tani and I have Teresa Caputo. And then Halloween's a week from Wednesday. I can't believe that it's like Halloween is like creeping up so fast. It seems crazy. party. It was like this tent party on these people's farm. And like everybody that we were friends with used to go to this party. People still talk about it. We were somewhere the other day. We ran into some friends of ours. And they're like, oh my God, do you remember so-and-so's Halloween party? Alex loved this party. I, I did not like it. I mean, it was very much like you're out in the middle of nowhere farm, this huge tent. Um, and it's a lot of drinking. I didn't love it. Um, but People would get like take buses out there and stuff, and um, like get party buses and take them out there to this party. We went one year. Did I go two years? After I think I went two years, and after that I was like, I'm not going again. It just wasn't, and it just wasn't a place I needed to go. Um, but the first year that no, it would have been the second year I went because I was like, I'm done with this. It rained so much when we were out there. And it's on a farm, so the parking lot was like mud and, you know, people got all their, it's always people that got their cars stuck. Most of which had no business driving anyway. And I remember just like sitting there forever being like, are we ever gonna be able to get out of here? I was so over it. I don't do that kind of stuff as much anymore. Like, I just don't enjoy it. So if I don't want to do it, I just don't do it, you know? Oh! Like driving by this urgent care place and it looks completely co closed. Aren't urgent care places open 24 hours? Or is that just emergency rooms? Maybe that's just emergency rooms. I don't know. Now I'm awake. See, this is what happens is I fall asleep early. Although the idea of going to sleep early and getting up early and getting a lot of stuff done has sounded great lately. One of the reasons why I didn't want to necessarily do that tonight was because if I wake up super early tomorrow and get a bunch of stuff done, I want to take a nap and the nap will hit right when we need to be leaving. Like I'll be wanting to take a nap right at the time that we need to get ready to leave and um, to go to this fundraiser. I, that's probably not a good idea for me, so. Um, Let's see what I was going to say. I don't even remember what I was going to say now. Shoot. Oh, now I'm awake. See, this is what happens. Like, I fall asleep early, and then I get up, and I've had a, bit, a little bit of sleep. And so, I'm awake. And then it's hard for me to fall asleep afterwards. Especially because I'm listening to this audiobook, which is incredibly cheesy, but I kind of like it. Um, 
Did I tell you what it was about? I did kind of tell you what it was about. So it's about this girl, and I don't really know yet, like, they, how her mom, like, died, if her mom died or if her mom left. Like, she has this dream sequence right at the beginning where her mom, like, gets killed in this explosion, but then she says later that she doesn't remember how long it's been since she saw her mom, and so it's kind of said in a weird way, and then her dad is, like, dating her mom's old business partner, and they're, like, on this... They go out in the middle of nowhere in these woods to go, like, uh, camping. And they have, like, this guide. And she's, like, a crush on him. And, like, her best friend's with her. But in the dream that she had at the beginning, like, her best friend was, like, this person that she was jealous of. So it didn't make this, like, the girl that, like, hated her the most at her school. So that doesn't make any sense to me. And then, um, not to mention, like, at the beginning, she's, like, trying to, like, she steals a cigarette out of her mom's purse in the car and she push push now I'm gonna tell you this story you tell me what part doesn't fit this is a current this book just came out okay she says she's sitting in the car and she takes a pack of, takes a cigarette out of her mom's pack because she wants to be cooler basically for school and if, if the people think that she smokes and then she'll they'll think she's a badass right so she puts the cigarette in her mouth and then she pushes the lighter in the car console in and then she even talks about it she can hear the click when it comes out so she picks it up what car today in 2018, what car in the last 10 years has been made that has a cigarette lighter in it? Do you guys, do you, do y'all have cigarette lighters in my, I don't. I mean, I have the thing for it, but like where you put chargers and stuff in there, but I haven't seen a car that has a cigarette lighter and I can't tell you how long. So I thought that was weird that had that in there, but anyway, she did say her mom smoked like a fiend, so. That was the other thing. She was like, because she lights a cigarette in the book. I mean, it was a dream sequence, but she was like, she sees her mom's pack of cigarettes in the purse, and she's like, I mean, I know my mom smokes on the sly. She doesn't want us kids to know about it. And I'm like, okay, and you're full-on smoking a cigarette in the passenger seat of the car while your mom ran into her office for five minutes, and you don't think she's going to smell it when she comes back out? As somebody that grew up hanging out my bedroom window smoking cigarettes, I can tell you right now they're gonna smell it a mile away. I'd light that cigarette, and about two seconds later, my stepmom be running up the stairs. I'd be like fanning out the, the room and spraying air freshener. She'd be like, "Have you been smoking in here?" I'd be like, "No." And she'd be like, "Peter, I used to smoke in my bedroom in high school, just like you. I know, okay? You just accept the consequence." I'd be like, "I swear, I wasn't smoking." <laughs> That lasted for, I don't know, about a month. And then one day my dad looked at me and he goes, do you smoke? And I go, <clears throat> yes. <laughs> it's funny, like, the things you go through and you think, like, nobody else has gone through when, like, other people have done the exact same thing as you. So they, like, know it. You know what I mean? <laughs> It was totally worth it though to hang out that window for that one drag before she bolted into my bedroom. <laughs> oh my gosh. I used to have like this crevice like underneath this. It's weird because I still have this chest of drawers today. Um, I mean, I don't use it actively. It's in my basement, but I still have it. Um, that I had in my bedroom when I was, like, at my dad's house. And it had this area, like, underneath it that you could, like, kind of, like, store stuff in. And I always kept my pack of cigarettes, like, shoved up in there. I was just thinking that I could, like, see them in there. But, like, I didn't smoke. Like, when I was in high school, like, some of my friends smoked a lot. Like, I, I did not. Um... Like, I smoked, but I didn't smoke a lot, you know? I definitely, like, really... Like, some of my friends were, like, a pack and a half or more smokers a day. And, uh... Especially when they got cars and they were, like, smoking and driving in their car, which was absolutely forbidden for me. But then I must have just started doing it at some point because I can remember smoking in my car. We would air it out. My one friend, oh my God, this is actually my friend I saw at Costco the other day. Uh, and the one, and so she, okay, we went to Chicago for Senior Skip Day. Do y'all know what Senior Skip Day is? I think I've told this story on here before. We went to Chicago for Senior Skip Day, a bunch of us. And, um, or was it that, 
we also went for a weekend one time, like five of us. It must have been that weekend that we went up there for like one night or whatever in Chicago. I can't remember it anyway. Shit, it's been too long. But on the way back, we drove her mom's minivan. And I mean to tell you, like the last hour and a half of that drive, because we smoked the whole way up there and the whole way back, I mean to tell you, she was like this on the steering wheel. And like, we'd be like, come on, let us smoke. She'd be like, no, nobody smokes in this car. And she was so panicked. And I'd be like, girl, listen, listen, okay? Anybody, any, okay, your mom's gonna already, did you ever try to convince your friends to shit like this? I was like, your mom is already gonna be able to smell the smoke. And this is after like, on the way up there, we're like, let us smoke in the van. She's like, no, you guys, stop bothering me. And we were like, no, girl, you're not gonna be able to smell the smoke at all in your mom's car. She's like, Yes, she will. And we're like, no, come on. Come on, we smoke all the time. Your mom's never gonna smell it. We'll put air freshener in here. We won't smoke on the way home. It'll be fine, right? And so she's finally like, okay. And we're all smoking and having fun, right? And then we get back into the van at the end and it reeks of a cigarette ashtray, right? Or a cigarette ashtray, it reeks of an ashtray. And she's like, I told you guys it was gonna stink in here. I knew my mother was gonna, we didn't care. We're like, girl. He isn't gonna know. It smelled straight up like a cigarette butt in that car. She went, girl, she isn't gonna know. Just let us smoke on the way home. She's like, no, nobody smokes. We're not smoking this car. We're like, come on, come on, girl. She's like, okay, you know. <laughs> so we get to smoke like the first half an hour. Then she had us all driving home with the windows down in the middle of the night. It was so cold outside. I remember we're all like, come on, girl, roll up the windows. <laughs> Oh my god, I need to call her and tell her that. That was so funny. I'll never forget that. She was so mad. She got so busted for that van smell like cigarette smoke. <laughs> that was my friend that couldn't decide if she was a badass or not. <laughs> See, there's a perfect example. The worst were those clove cigarettes. You remember they pop and then they like burn on, they burn like a hole right through your coat or something like that. I remember back in the day too, like, you know, as, as somebody that, I don't ever like to like tell funny, necessarily funny stories of my using on here. I just don't, I don't know. Maybe you guys would think it was interesting, but I don't know that I think it's highly appropriate, if that makes sense. But um, I was never like a good pot smoker. I just wasn't. Like I love to smoke pot and I smoked it all the time and I wasn't successful at it like some people out there. But, um, and what I mean by that is that I smoked it all day, every day. But I also like couldn't roll joints very well. And, um, like, I, I got really good towards the end. Like, I could roll a joint like that. But for a long time, I couldn't. And I would go to this guy, and I would buy these joints for $5, right? And um, I, like, do you remember back in the day when you would buy pot, and it was, like, seeds and stems? And see, the seeds would pop, right? Like, constantly. Like, now I see, like, when I, pictures on Instagram and stuff of people, they're holding, like, these buds that are, like, this big. I'm like, yeah, I never saw anything like that when I was smoking pot, okay? You were, like, looking in a bag, shaking it up in the light. Like, is there even anything that resembles a bud in there? And you were lucky if you could find anything, right? So, I mean, you would smoke a joint, and it would just pop, 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 pop. Do you remember that? And you get, like, holes in sweatshirts and shit like that. I always felt like it was so dirty. <laughs> I know there are some of you out there that smoke the ganj. Hey, have at it, okay? I just hope it doesn't own you like my, it owned me back in the day. But there are some people out there that can smoke it successfully. There are some people that can drink successfully. I just wasn't one of those people. Mm. It smells so good. It really does. It's so nice. This is such a fantastic gift, Kara. Thank you. And the other thing that's like different, I always think of this when I see shows where they do this, like 
the idea of going to get a cup of coffee before school, like, can you even imagine, like, if you're my age, taking, like, a Starbucks to school with you? They would have looked at you like you were crazy. We were lucky if we were able to bring water bottles into class, okay, or sodas. Like, I think you could, we could only have, like, cans of soda at, like, lunchtime or something like that. There were so many strict rules. And I didn't go to, like, some strict private school either. I went straight up to public school. But we had all these rules, like, about, like, when you could drink soda and stuff. Do you remember that? Like, you had to get, like, on special pizza days, you'd get, like, soda or whatever. But I love when I see, like, in these TV shows and stuff. If you guys have kids, I mean, that are, like, that age, are they allowed to take Starbucks and stuff to school? Like, that's crazy to me. You, know, you can just take Starbucks straight into school. It's a different world now. There's like this private school in Indianapolis and it has this Chick-fil-A that's right by it. And they like, I think it's on Wednesday mornings between like six and seven, they offer like all the students that come through there, they get like some like free, like it, the line is crazy long. Um, they offer them like a free uh, like chicken biscuit and hash browns if they come through there or something like that. I had heard about it for a long time and then I was like driving by it like one morning I was up early for something I can't remember and I was like oh my god like look at that line everybody likes a free deal in life don't they <laughs> everybody likes something free in life <clears throat> there's always a price to pay for everything Dr. Pepper tastes so good. Oh, I didn't even finish telling you about the book. Do you care? Okay, so campfire. So then they sit around this campfire. This is, and I'm not at this point yet. I'm at the point where her horse goes crazy and the guide has to help her. And of course he's gorgeous. And I think like, I don't know. He's got some Australian accent or something. I don't know. She's going on and on about him. But anyway. <laughs> Don't you love how I describe books? She's going on and on about him. But anyway, um, supposedly they sit around a campfire and he tells them all of these stories, campfire ghost stories, right? And then they all come real. <laughs> and you know, I'll be sitting here like this the whole time, like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I always make fun of this stuff, but I totally buy into it. I love it all. literally dazing off and I just heard it go beep and turn off. I didn't even realize I was anywhere close to being at the end. Anyway, I can't believe I have logged now for 48 minutes already. That's crazy. Well, almost 48 because it comes like 23 minutes and 40 seconds or something. So I'm going to listen to my audiobook for in a little bit. And then tomorrow, get up and get some coffee and come back and take a shower film some videos and then well I have to go to I need to find something to wear for tomorrow night I have nothing to wear to this like fundraiser tomorrow night so I may go to Nordstrom Rack and see what they have I'd like to wear something that looked a little bit nicer to her. It's semi-formal to formal. Like, I know what formal is, but what is semi-formal? I guess I don't even know. Is that like... I don't know. I'm trying to think of what I wore to the state convention when Tanya and I went with my sponsor. Because I dressed up kind of for that. I feel like I wore like a button down plaid shirt and like a navy like blazer and like khakis. Like that would be considered kind of semi formal, don't you think? But it's like fall. Like that's not really like a fall kind of outfit. I think like semi formal to formal. Like formal, it's like semi formal, formal, and then there's black tie, right? Like this is not black tie. I've been to similar fundraisers for this. Alex is wearing a suit, but with no tie. 
Um, like he'll probably wear like a Burberry like button down, or like a Burberry uh, like polo shirt or something underneath it, or like a button down plaid shirt. He's got like a khaki suit. I think he's wearing. Um, oh, you know what? I have that blue that. But that's a linen suit. I was gonna say I have that blue linen suit that I bought when I went to um, that wedding. Oh, I could go to Macy's. They have nice suits, and I could buy a suit there. Um, oh, maybe I'll do that tomorrow. They have pretty cheap suits, and then I can get something that I could wear throughout the winter too. But I've lost some weight, so I bet that blue suit wouldn't fit me the same way that it did. you what I would love to do is get like a tweed suit and wear like a blue button down collared uh, shirt with it. I'll go tomorrow and I'll look and see what they have. I know they're not going to have any tweed suits up at Macy's. Dream on Peter. Tweed, I'll have a tweed suit for $60. <laughs> What's his name from Jeopardy, Alex? Alex, I'll take a tweed suit for $60 from Macy's on sale, please. <laughs> Size 3XL. <laughs> I'm not a 3XL, I swear I'm not. I know that it might be, it might seem that way sometimes. Actually, if you are ever, if your husband or boyfriend's ever looking for a suit for a wedding or whatever, Macy's, they have this brand called INC and they throw out these cheap ass suits left and right. But the suits, I'm telling you right now, like they're not expensive, but they're, I mean, they're expensive, but they're not expensive for a suit. You know what I mean? It's easy to, to go anywhere and spend a minimum of a couple hundred dollars on a suit, right? Well, there, their suits, they literally have like pants in all sizes, jackets in all sizes, mix match, right? They have fall, they, are, they have uh, summer looks, they have winter looks, they have everything. It's like their main brand that they have in there, I think. So anyway, but um, but their suits really hold up. Like these INC suits, like they're not like the best made suits in the entire world, but they hold up. Like, I mean, I've had some suits of theirs that I've worn for years and years and years. I actually wish I just had like a black suit to wear this thing tomorrow night. I would just wear a black suit with a white button down collared shirt. That's what I would like to wear tomorrow night. Maybe I'll just go in there and buy a black suit tomorrow. I feel like I have a black suit in my closet, but I don't think it probably fits. If I told you how many suits I bought that are that INC brand through the years that are hanging in our basement or in our closet, that if I lost 30 pounds, I could fit into all of them. I'm holding steady at the same weight that I was. I don't know why I've been talking for almost an hour and my nose just started bothering me, but it did. I think Macy's always has pretty good deals. Their clearance section is like surreal. I mean, it is like so, but there's too much to look at. It's like, I've gone, I've like gone through it before and I'm like, I can't do this. Like, this is just too much. But they always seem to have pretty good deals. So yeah, I'll do that. I won't even go into Nordstrom Rack. Nordstrom Rack will just make me want to get a pair of Joe's jeans khakis for $80 and a fall shirt and I'll look way underdressed. And I'll just go to Macy's and I'll buy like a black or a gray suit and get a white. I've got a couple of gray suits so I'd rather get a white, a black one with like a white button down collared shirt. And then I'll walk in and I'll be like, fly me to the moon. <laughs> what? I'm like thinking to myself, like, what black shoes do I have that I could wear to this thing tomorrow night, though? Fly me to the moon. My, like, nice, like, like shoes, like dress shoes and stuff, I, I keep in all the boxes. Like in the uh, closet, not like in the sh like closed closet, but like in our other closet in the bathroom. So that like when I want to break them out, I have a really nice pair in there. Me to the moon. But that would also be an excuse to buy another pair of shoes. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to buy a pair of black shoes. If I'm gonna buy a pair of shoes, I'm gonna buy a pair of shoes that I know that I want to wear. You know. <sighs> Interesting. 
interesting, like the names they pick for like neighborhoods. Do you ever wonder like why they come up with certain names for neighborhoods? I always think it's interesting the names they pick. That blue suit that I bought for the wedding that we went to in Cincinnati, it would be nice, but it's a linen suit. Um, it's fall, so, like, that won't fly. Um, I mean, I know that it doesn't really matter, but... If I get this black suit, and then I can end up wearing it to, like, a Christmas party, I could wear it with, like, a, you know, a red and black, like, plaid shirt. Because I kind of like that look anyway. Um, I could wear it to New Year's, unless I've lost more weight. Which would be awesome with it. So, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I know, I know. Da 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 da. Do 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 do. Sky is so pretty out here. In the, um, country. You know, I was just thinking of that movie. Did you guys ever see that movie? Uh, What's it called? The Great Hereafter? Is that what it was called? It was about that school bus that <clears throat> went off the edge and all the kids died. Everybody died in the school bus crash. Did you guys know The Sweet Hereafter? Did you guys ever see that movie? God, it was so sad, but it was so beautifully done. I sometimes like when I'm driving around the country, like during the day, I sometimes want to just like pull over and, uh, just like walk out in the country, like into uh, mustard fields and stuff. And the other thing is like, you know when you're like driving on like a road trip or something, you see like a creek, you know, and it looks so pretty. I always see people like take pictures, like wading through those creeks and stuff. And I always want to do the same thing. And I'm like, <clears throat> where do you park your car? Like, where do you go to do, you know what I mean? I always think it'd be fun though. My temple started pulsing, I don't know why. But yeah, I always think it would be fun to kind of like go out there and um, just like, you know, walk through this creek that's just out in the middle of <clears throat> nowhere or whatever. Do people do that? Have you guys done that? I think that would be fun. It's always so still at night. I very rarely, when I'm vlogging, um, and maybe it's because I do drive out into the country. I mean, I'm not really in the country. I'm kind of like country, suburbia, country slash suburbia a little bit. I mean, there's like a neighborhood here, then a lot of like fields and then whatever. But maybe it's because I'm driving out in the middle of nowhere, but I very rarely um, like pass other cars and other people, you know? Unless I'm driving on the interstate, which I don't think I've, well, when I was going to the casino to meet my friend Valerie, I did, but um, I very rarely do I pass cars out here, you know, especially on this road that I, I come down like the same roads every night. Oh my gosh, almost, the lid almost came off. That would have been a mess. sing to yourselves or hum. Well, my mom said it was something I did when I was a little kid that I would sing to myself a lot and I don't remember that but I definitely it's something I've just picked up in the last couple years it's not something that I mean I've always loved music I've always you know danced and all that kind of stuff but like just to like all of a sudden like break out in a song is not something that I haven't done that my whole life. I don't know 
where it kind of started all of a sudden for me again, you know? It was like, one day I was just like, I know, <laughs> I know. And it's weird too where like you think about why well, certain songs come into your head. You ever think about that? I wanna dance with somebody. I wanna feel the heat with somebody. That's the little neighborhood right there that I told Alex if we were gonna move up here, we were gonna move into. He said, I don't wanna live in a neighborhood like that or something. He's like, I don't wanna live in suburbia. I don't wanna live in a neighborhood. <laughs> okay. He said, I wanna live downtown. I want to live in Lockerbie. Lockerbie is this really cute area downtown Indianapolis, but you could literally pay about eight hundred to a million dollars for a place that's probably about half the size of our condo right now. It's so expensive to live downtown Indianapolis. Everybody's like wanting to live downtown Indianapolis now. It's kind of crazy. For a while, nobody wanted to do, live down there, you know, and then they like, uh, what's it called, gentrification or whatever. They like went in and they like made like all of these areas just like, it seemed like just within like a matter of like a, like two or three years, we had like arts districts popping up downtown and like all these fantastic restaurants that were winning like national awards and you know, They've really done a nice job making Indianapolis into this, you know, really great area and like lots of like city parks and stuff, which is really nice. And um, they've improved the transit system downtown. Um, Indianapolis is like, I don't know, like, it, I don't think it's a city. Like, when people tell me they're coming here to visit, like, just to hang out for the weekend, I'm always kind of like, what for? Like, that doesn't make any sense to me, like, why anybody would just come to Indianapolis for a weekend, unless you were coming here for, like, a play, or if you lived close in, like, a smaller city, or coming here to hang out, or you were coming here for, like, the race, like, the Indy 500. Like, there's not really a reason to come to Indianapolis. Like, it's a great place to, like, grow up, and it's a great place to raise your family, and it's, you know, it's, I mean, I love Indiana. I mean, I really, really do. But there's not, like, really anything... Like, when I think of Chicago, and I think of, like, all the things to go do there, but Chicago's not even a fair estimate because of the size. Like, when I think of, like, Louisville, Kentucky, right? Like, Louisville has, like, a lot of stuff that goes on throughout the year there. Uh, they have big clubs, and, you know, um, Cincinnati, which is not as... Which is bigger than Indianapolis, but similar in size, <clears throat> I think, you know, has, I mean, we don't even really, besides the Colts, have, like, serious, like, sports teams, right? I don't know, it's always interesting to me, but I know that Indianapolis is trying to improve things. I still can't believe we have the Super Bowl here. Oh, my God, that was such a fun time. Oh, my God, that was such a fun time. That was at, like, the height of, um, the website that Alex and I run. Well, he runs it now, but, um, and we got invited, literally, VIP, to every party that came through here. Every party. It was so fun. We had so much fun during the week of the Super Bowl. Madonna came, and she was, like, the halftime show that year. And she stayed with, like... She stayed in a private house, like, way up where I'm at right now, which is, I'm probably, like, 40 minutes from downtown. She didn't even, like, a lot of people, like, celebrities that came, they didn't even stay at hotels. They stayed in, like, people's private homes, and, um, which I thought was interesting. And people rented out their homes and all this kind of stuff. That was kind of surreal to see the Super Bowl come in here for that week. If you, I mean, like, people, like, Indianapolis was doing construction downtown on things that were just solely going to exist for the Super Bowl, like, a year in advance. Like, it was, it was weird. Um... If you've ever been a city that a Super Bowl has come through before, you'll know what I'm talking about, especially if you're smaller like Indianapolis was. I still can't believe we got the bid for that. I think it's so strange, but, you know, I think... What is rolling around over here? Oh, more change. A tiny left over there for me. I, it does show, though, you know, that maybe Indianapolis is more metropolitan than I think it is. I don't know. I just grew up here. It's a very small town to me. I mean, Indianapolis... This is what's nice about Indianapolis, okay? It's like... 
it's a, it's a small tra town trying to be a big town, but it's a bigger town that still has a small town feel to it. Like, there's no way you could get lost downtown. I mean, you couldn't. I mean, the entire proximity of downtown Indianapolis, well, first of all, we're on a grid, okay? Like, the whole Indianapolis is on a grid. But it's literally probably, shoot, I don't know, 10 city blocks across is the length of downtown, if that maybe eight, you know, of downtown Indianapolis. It goes from, like, College Avenue all the way over to, like, I don't even know, like, what road would go over to over there. But, you know, it's like, there just aren't even, it doesn't even go that, it's not even, downtown's not even that big. So it's a very safe, bigger town, if that makes sense. It's a good, it's a great town to grow up in. It's a great town to raise your family in. I don't know, maybe people would disagree with me that live here, but. It feels very safe. Very homey. family. <laughs> I never really thought of it that way before, though. It's weird that I, I say that, that it's like a small, big city, but it is because it's not a big city. I mean, when I think of like, you know, Chicago or, God, I mean, even like driving into Louisville, like Louisville is like massive in comparison to Indianapolis, you know, and so is Cincinnati and Like, Indianapolis is pretty small. But they're trying to pull it together. It's nicer now than it was, you know, 30 years ago. I think people like my mom and my aunt would be very... My mom would be very proud of what Indianapolis was like right now. There's a lot of important stuff going on here. And important movements. And my mom was very invested in the arts of Indianapolis. And... You know, it's just really improved a lot over time. So, I don't know. I like it. I call it home. So, <laughs> all right, you guys, listen. I'm going to get off here and listen to my audiobook a little bit before I go to my actual home and uh, go to sleep for the night. Thank God it's Friday. It's your Friday. I hope you guys are having a wonderful beginning to your weekend. And, um, I will be back tomorrow, which is Saturday, but it'll be my Friday, and, well, I won't be able to tell you, but when you guys are watching my next one, I don't want to make this too confusing for you, so I'll just say this. Friday, I'm going to see Halloween, the premiere, and Saturday, Melissa and I are doing a review of it. My review of uh, the El Royale movie is up on my... Uh, Peter Review Stuff channel. I'm doing another review, a food review, if I get a chance tomorrow. If not, probably Sunday. Um, so yeah, come and check it out. And I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and do some really kind of fun Halloween-y stuff. And uh, if you're going to get in costume for Halloween, let me know what you're going to be as a costume below. Lots of blue hearts for the wolf pack. Um, let's put lots of blue hearts below. I love you guys, and I will see you later. Bye.